So let's get into some advanced Linux tips today. There's three advanced tips I want to share with you that I haven't ever seen covered on YouTube. And some of these things, I just kind of been using Linux for a while now, and I noticed they just kind of nagged at me and I was able to fix them. Uh, I will jump into the first tip, which I think pretty much everyone should do, especially if you leave your computers on. One of the big reasons I use Linux is because it's so stable and reliable. So I leave my computers up for weeks, if not months at a time without even rebooting. And this first tip was something I found after leaving on for a couple weeks, it happened. So with that, let's get on the desktop and start tackling these. So we'll jump over to the desktop and you'll see that I am in Grub Customizer. Grub Customizer right here is a really great program, makes it very easy to kind of edit your system. You can install this on Debian, Arch, pretty much any distribution out there has this, so I highly recommend it. So if we go into general settings from the list view, you'll notice there's kernel parameters. This is a very easy way. You technically can just go edit the file directly, but I find this way just so much easier because it just gives you a simple uh, command here. Now there's a couple things here. You'll notice I am doing some uh, IOMMU. This is for virtualization, um, but you don't necessarily need this. And for my motherboard, I'm doing this command because I was getting a couple errors that I wanted to straighten out. But most of this, you probably will just see a blank line where it doesn't have anything, and that's okay. Uh, SysRQ, this was an actual video I did for the SysRQ key on your keyboard. If you're interested, I'll link that up there. But the last option is really what we're talking about for the advanced tip today. Auto core dot auto suspend equals negative one. What this does is it makes sure your USB ports never go into suspend mode. I found after a couple weeks in my Linux system, I would go plug in a thumb drive and it wouldn't recognize it. And I need to either reboot my system or basically take that port down and call it back up by uh, rebooting my, my service. And both these are not ideal. I want this just to always work. I don't want my USB ports going into suspend. I mean, really, how much energy are you saving by suspending your USB ports? So I always change this to negative one as I have run into problems, especially on my studio PC here. So uh, this is my first tip. I just download Grub Customizer and add this into the kernel parameters. Or if you already know how to add to the kernel parameters, you can easily just do this by modifying Grub manually. However, I like to go to Grub Customizer because it'll, you know, it'd be a little bit more user friendly and less chances of errors happening. So that brings us to tip number two, and that's going to be more of the Linux server crowd, but you might use this in yours as well. Now, when it comes to auto logging in, I have uh, I'm logged in through SSH on a Linux server, which is right up there, and. Uh, that server, I don't have a keyboard or a mouse to, and I want to make sure it always auto logs in. Now, if you're using a Linux desktop, you can just modify your display uh, manager and just go right in. So if you have light DM, you could just say, hey, auto log in. But for a Linux server that doesn't have a monitor or really a display, you can't use that. So what I do is I just modify uh, the Getty service under system D. So in the ETC system D system folder, Getty target. Uh, now this might vary depending on the system. It might not always be Getty dot target dot once. I've seen Getty one. I've seen a couple other variants of this. So, but it, they've always been in the system D forward slash system folder under ETC. So if we do a listing, you'll see Getty at TTY one. And if you're not familiar with TTY, that's the console. That's when your display doesn't come up and you drop to TTY. So if you're an NVIDIA user, you've probably experienced this where you get a black screen on startup. And you're like, oh, I need to I need to install that driver that I forgot to install during the installation. You could just hit control alt and then press like F2 or F3 to drop to TTY2 or TTY3 uh, respectively. But on a Linux server, there is no display and we're always in TTY. So if we nano getty at tty1 service, I've modified the actual login. The actual login service typically runs this right here, which I've commented out so you can see. This is what the default Linux server uh, login screen is. Well, I wanna bypass this login screen as I have it local here. And if someone has access to this room, well, they're gonna be able to do a lot worse things than log into some old virtualized box. So I wanna just make sure there's no login as I want to do some cool displays so you can see it in the videos. So what I do is I just commented that out and instead of that dash O and all this stuff, 
I do dash I, which is shorthand for no issue. Uh, if you don't want to do dash I, you could do dash dash no dash issue. And then dash A for auto login. This is shorthand for dash dash auto login. And then it logs in as my username root. And this is pretty much standard as you see it up here as well. So what this does is one, the no issue command, make sure that no issues are displayed on the screen. And uh, that is kind of important as you want to probably run a command after this if you're utilizing it like I am. But uh, the dash A is auto login, of course, I mean, kind of self-explanatory. And that way we can reboot this system and it'll always auto log into the bash prompt and there's no login screen at all. Now, obviously for business, you would want this, but for this, this is just the local console. So that's how to auto log in with just a headless system. But now that we got that, there's some other cool stuff you have going. And I'm going to go to the big screen here just so you can see what the, these screens are doing right now. So up here at the top, you'll notice that they're both running C matrix. Now this one up here has some weird configuration of C matrix going, but we can actually pipe commands directly to this system. So let's go ahead. I have a timer script. I like to run when I'm live streaming that, uh, you know, kind of just does it all on the terminal, which is kind of neat. So let's go ahead, jump back into primary. And then from here, we'll run this timer command. So I'm going to just go back into my root. So I have a timer script on here that does some really cool stuff as far as the timer goes. So if I just do a forward slash timer dot sh, you'll kind of just see it here, but not over here where we want it actually displaying on the console. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of this, but we can actually pipe this directly to the console. So we'll actually do the timer command again, but this time we'll just do a forward slash to push it to device TTY one. So let's go ahead and do that and switch over to full screen so you can see. And you'll notice very, very light text. Well, it's still running C matrix, but it also went ahead and threw this over on top of TTY. So we have C matrix and this timer all going on at the same time. So that's no good. Let's go ahead, cancel out of this. Now we'll actually kill that command over here, but uh, let's go ahead and kill the C matrix command. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip back and actually I'll just do a kill all and I'm just gonna go C matrix. So that'll actually stop the C matrix. It's still there. So uh, we can actually do a clear and then pipe that to dev TTY and that cleared the screen out. So now it's just a black screen and now we can go ahead and pipe that entire thing again. And I'll show all these commands in just a little left here. So there we go. So that is the actual command timer clean that we just went ahead and did all this remotely. Now the cool thing is we can actually jump back on the terminal. I'm gonna show you this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, cancel this command. It'll go ahead and clear out. And we can clear that screen again. And it's clear. So I'm gonna jump that back to terminal just so you can see all this. So with all these commands run, um, there's one other thing I like to do since it's auto logging in the last command it pretty much does is when it logs into the bash prompt, it runs bash RC. So if we do nano dot bash RC, and at the very bottom, you notice how it says min C matrix and pushes it to TTY. And then the ampersand just makes sure that it just goes ahead and keeps going. So I could actually do things at the console and it's not just stuck on this actual command. So kind of cool way to uh, run like C matrix in the background without ever doing anything. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close this out and I'm just going to give it a reboot. This reboot, I'll go ahead and hit reboot and we'll actually watch the boot up process so you can see it auto log in and run C matrix all at the same time. So we'll go reboot and jump back over to full screen so you can actually see what we've done as far as the auto log in from the console point of view. Since I don't have a keyboard and mouse, this makes it pretty darn cool as far as the startup uh, goes. So it'll go through here, go through grub in about a couple seconds, jump in, do the full load up, and then instead of dropping to say, hey, username, it actually drops right into console, and then we'll run that C matrix command. So let's see that happen. There it is. 
So there, there's a way of actually auto-logging into your servers and also pushing commands directly to the console. Um, and this is not an actual full display. I want to say that right now. If you had a Linux desktop and you wanted to push it to an actual screen that had like Xorg and everything going to where it was a graphic user interface, you wouldn't do it through TTY. You'd want to be doing it through an actual display and, and that's a whole different video. But I wanted to show this as I thought it was kind of a cool advanced tip uh, that is more for fun, but also has some practical purposes. How'd you like these advanced tips? I'm going to try and do maybe one of these every couple weeks, just as something where if I see something no one's ever talked about, I'm going to try and just kind of put that knowledge out there just to kind of expand the library. And if you I want to see if I've already covered something, definitely go to the main channel of my YouTube. And from that channel, you can actually go ahead and access all the videos just by doing a simple search. So if you're looking for Grub or if you're looking for a login manager, and you want to know there's a chance I've already made that video. So definitely do a search on my channel. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.